Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of 12 Inch Figure Fanatic. Remember to subscribe. Today, I'm opening up Happy Days Arthur Fonzarelli. I've been waiting a long time for this pre order. It's a collaboration by Infinite and Caustic Plastic. And not only that, but I got the limited edition that comes with a, uh, a jukebox that's uh, apparently Bluetooth operated, so I could, I could blast all kinds of music on it. But uh, let's crack these open and see what we got here. I'm so excited. All right, so we're going to open up the figure itself first before we get to the jukebox. Now, I, I have to admit, I, I, I saw a few I, I, bits and pieces of this show when I was a kid, but I wasn't too into it. Um, but I did love Arthur Fonzarelli. He was like a hero to me because as a young Italian kid, it was, he was like the, uh, the representation of something to look up to to become as an adult. You know, the greased hair, the leather jacket. He was the uh, prototypical uh, 1950s uh, rebel without a cause type, um, but put in a, uh, a, a, a comedy. And um, in real life, it's, it's ironic because he could be as, he, he, he comes as Jewish as they get. So <laughs> not Italian at all. But the box, the box is uh, pretty, pretty nice, sturdy. Uh, got a picture of him, uh, limited edition, one six action figure. And then it tells you all the features. Oh, there he is with this classic uh, pose. Um, a fake autograph on there. That's pretty nice. Nice touch. They didn't have to do this. Not bad, right? Now it doesn't say a limited quantity of 600. I, I, that surprises me. Okay, yeah. Expression gratitude, the team that created it. I didn't know it was only 600 pieces. That's amazing. That's, uh, that's pretty low for a mainstream figure. Oh, wow. Okay, so pretty good. I'd say uh, maybe maybe a little too cartoonish. It's a little off. Um, a little too glossy on the hair and not enough depth to it. They could have um, been, especially in the back, look at that. They could have done better at indicating the, uh, the strands of hair. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it should be this glossy because he was a you know, greaser. Um, brown leather jacket, leather type jacket. Now, I, I, I wonder if this will hold up over time. I worry about pleather these days after my uh, debacle. If you go back and look at my, uh, my ter original Terminator film, um, uh, Schwarzenegger, it, uh, it fell apart as I was unboxing it. Overall, I mean, it, it's it, it, I like the cut on it. It's perfectly cut. They did something with the figure itself, the body, that makes it look perfect as well. Everything is very crisp. Um, there's actually a buckle on here, and there's a strap. And it's um, the boot itself is not sculpted at all. It is um, also pleather, which... Some of you may or may not be nervous about that as well because it means that this has the potential to crack over time as well. I don't know. The, the jeans are weathered, though. No belt, but he didn't wear a belt in the show. And you can see some slight structure to the chest. Um, he's already posed with his, his classic thumbs up. Beautiful. I love it. All right, let's see what else we got here. All right, maybe they redeemed themselves with this second head sculpt. Perfect. I love it. Now, this is him. Yes. So, where did we go wrong with this one? I think maybe the nose is too wide on the smiling one. Right? And the eyes are too... Yep, look at the, look at the brown of the eyes. Big difference here. Um... They made the eyes too beady on the smiling one. And if anything, maybe too doe-eyed on the straight-faced one. But I definitely think this one is better. 
Yeah. Tell me what you think in the comments. Way different. Even the profile. It's like, it's like they used a different sculptor for each one. Bizarre. Even the paint is slightly different. Okay. And we got a few more hands. And they're all weathered. Got some texture to them, especially around the knuckles. You can see the pink. Anything else? Oh, so something flew. Aha! Got it. It was hiding on me, but here's his comb. A little cartoonish looking. I don't like it at all. I would rather they have made it just um, a solid sculpt here and then indicated lines, sculpted in some lines, rather than make the gaps in between because it looks a little too cartoonish. And then you have a stand. Happy days. Doesn't say Arthur or Fonzarelli anywhere. Action. Deluxe figure. Infinite statue. Designed in Italy. Hey, forget about it. So there's no actual stand in here to, to uh, clip him in there or, or, st or stand him up and, and have him secured. Um, that's interesting. I, I haven't seen a stand with a, a base without a stand for a while. But I, I, it's, it's definitely an upgrade. I mean, they even got the padding on the bottom um, to protect any surface that you might have it on so it doesn't slip. So I prefer there's a name, but I'll take it. It's nice. Got the checkered floor like in the diner. And that's pretty much it. So let us open the jukebox next. All right. So hopefully this has, sometimes when you get to these Bluetooth enabled things, that, it, that charge via USB, they're, they're slightly charged, just a little bit enough to test it out and play with it a little bit before you need to charge it fully. So hopefully that'll be the case here so I can demo it pretty quickly. Otherwise, I'll have to take a break and charge this thing up. But um, yeah, not too much to the box. Just to, has a nice picture of it on here and talks about the features. It's got the Bluetooth speaker, works with Android or iOS, switchable light system. I don't know what that means. Uh, rechargeable via USB, Pat batteries, battery not included, required one, rechargeable lithium battery. Oh, it's actually saying you need a rechargeable battery. Oh, I do have some, but I don't know if I need, I have the one that this needs. Let's see. Oof. Oh, wow. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. Not even any instructions. Is that right? Am I missing something? Nope. That's it. Just the. Now it does have. Look at how detailed it gets in there. Got a glare here. Sorry about that. Put the record changer in there. In the back, you got the. It looks like the charge uh, port right here. Looks like a switch. Power on switch. It's not powering on. Um, a random plaque without anything on it. Weird. And that's pretty much it. All right. So it looks no movement on the on the front here. Nothing. No buttons work or anything like that. Oh boy. Let me charge this up and see if I could figure it out. I'll be back. All right, welcome back. So believe it or not, it has not been minutes or even hours. It has been days since the first part of this video. And the reason for that is I found out that this jukebox takes a very specific type of battery that I have never seen before in my over 40 years on this planet. And that is this right here. It's a 5,000 megahertz, 3.7 volt rechargeable battery. 
and it's like it looks like a double A, but it's l larger than a double A. Why they went with this, I don't know. They could have gone with three triple A's, two double A's, but they did this special battery that has to be inserted in here. And now, fortunately, from there you can recharge this via USB once the battery is in there. Um, so let's take a closer look at this thing now that we've got power for it. So throw the switch here. Bluetooth mode. All right, so it's saying that the Bluetooth mode's connected. Um, I, I have mixed feelings about this. All right, so they, they, they took a few shortcuts on this thing. One major one was the lighting itself. So there's essentially three panels in here. One runs along the back on the right, another one along the back on the left, and it lights this up. Now, this would have been a lot brighter if they brought the light panel forward to, let's say, right about here inside, rather than all the way back here. Completely unnecessary, a waste of lighting. Second, if you look closely, all of this basic panel of the, of the LED lighting is exposed. So you got these, I don't know what these mean. Some of you are into electronics, I'm certainly not, but these letters and numbers represent something as far as soldering maybe. All of that is exposed. Also, there's no movement on this whole interior at all. There's no rotation, no movement. The, because once again, because the LEDs are in the back, this panel up front has limited illuminability. Illuminability, is that a word? Illumination. Um, also, it should be, this should be white. It should be illuminated white, not this reddish color that, or orangish color that's in the back here. So it, it's just kind of haphazardly put together. It's, it, it's as if they said, yeah, we've definitely got to have a jukebox with the deluxe version. And then as they got deeper into this project, they said, okay, we promised these people a jukebox, but let's just throw this thing together. And they, they just half-ass it the entire way. Um, but I do have to say that it does look good with the figure. And I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get a Fonzie figure without the jukebox. It just they, they go together. I mean, in the show, he banged on it all the time. Um, so it just, it just looks great. So my final thoughts. I'm going to rate the figure separately so that it, it just does, doesn't unjustifiably lose points because of this cheap-ass jukebox. I'm going to give the figure a 8.9. Um, it, it had all, all the right things going on. That first head sculpt, though, very scary, very scary. But otherwise, everything's looking great. The detail on, on, the, uh, on the hands, on the head, uh, the boots... Every, every the even the body style it's it's good so i think that's that's fair now this thing i mean it's one of the, you really can't i mean they threw it in there fine but i will say that the sound is good too i can't i can't demonstrate the sound because my phone is running um for this video but i i played the happy day song uh on it and it it's just fine so that that part's good um but otherwise yeah they they cut too many corners on the thing Anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys, and I will see you later.